What's up guys, Sean here from Mostly Metal. Um, we're gonna have uh, quite a variety of items to talk about today from all over the musical spectrum. Um, we're gonna start with music in the background. This is the new Helms Ali album called Noctiluca. Um, this is out on Sergeant House Records. Um, cool. I, know, I consider them kind of an independent label, but I guess they're kind of a mid-major label. Um, Helms Lee, I believe, are from the West Coast. And here's the inserts. Three-piece, obviously. You can see their eyeballs there. And lyrics on this side. Um, as you can hear, probably in the background, some female vocals. The, the male and female vocals are interspersed between most of the songs, which uh, normally I'm not a huge fan of. To me, it kind of ruins the flow of a song when you have all these different vocal styles coming in. But uh, for these guys, it works pretty well. Um, I describe them as kind of a post-punk, um, kind of like if Jesus Lizard had some female vocals. They've got that super low bottom heavy feel to their music. Um, kind of, uh, I hate saying post-punk, and I hate trying to label music, but that's the best uh, label I can think of to describe them. But I have a few of their albums, and they're all great. Um, this is kind of my third or fourth spin going through this one, and I like it a lot so far. A uh, song, what's it called? Play Dead. It's kind of one of those earworm songs. You'll probably hear it coming up here. I think it's uh, two songs from now, so... If you hear it in the background, that's the that's the song playing. Um, good good stuff. Great production on this album, um, and it's just the standard black vinyl, so nothing cool to show you there. But if you kind of like the vocal style, of this uh, I can't remember her name for the life of me. I had it in my head, but uh, great vocal style that blends well with the heaviness of the music. I kind of like the contrast of the super heavy with the the nice vocals. So check them out, Helms of Leaf. Um, next up is a Blu-ray that I pre-ordered a while back and it finally came in. And this is May It Last by the Avent Brothers. Um, this is a documentary, uh, looks like Judd Apatow and Michael Bonfiglio put this together. Um, it was actually on, uh, the bag, on HBO. It's a documentary, if you don't know. Uh, I shouldn't know the names of these guys. One of them's Seth, and one of them is Scott, maybe. I can't remember, but that's the Avid Brothers right there. But uh, this album um, is about the making of their last album, which is called True Sadness. A uh, great album. Um, Avid Brothers, they're kind of hard to pin down. I saw them live before they got super popular, opening for BI BR549 in a bar in Chicago. And the... Uh, it was just those two guys, the brothers at the time, but one of the brothers was playing a banjo and stomping on a bass drum and a hi-hat with his feet while they were playing songs, and I was blown away then, and it was kind of cool to, when you see a band early in their career, and now they're playing arenas. Um, but this was a great documentary behind the scenes on how these guys get together and write songs. Um, they actually have a other than these two guys, there's five other people in the band now, um, which is kind of their live band, which is a recent, all these other five musicians are all great, recent additions in the last few years, I think. So it's the first time they've all gotten in a room as a band and recorded music like this. And they're on uh, Deaf American, which is, um, oh, can't remember the, the guy's name now, but he's the big time producer that did Slayer and Beastie Boys and Rick Rubin. Jesus, how did I remember that? Um, it kind of shows how they write the songs, which is cool in a way because um, if you're a fan of like these guys, like the country Americana type stuff, um, it's cool to see how they write songs. If you listen, if you're a country music fan, um, I'm, you know, when I say country music, I'm talking about the crap they play on the radio today. Um, if you look at the credits in any of these albums, the the songs aren't usually written by the guys that sing them, which is kind of a I think Nashville try to keep tries to keep that information on the down low. You'd want to think that Luke Bryan and Jason Aldean and Kane Brown and some of these other guys are all you know sitting with their guitars writing all these uh, hits. 
but in reality in Nashville, Music Row, there's actually, they pay people like nine to five jobs and they sit in a room and say, hey guys, what are we going to write a song about today? Hey, let's write a song about pickup trucks and dirt roads. And they start strumming chords together and they come up with a song and then they sell these songs to these country stars to um, perform and then they in turn get paid if the song takes off. Um, it's kind of disingenuous in my opinion. Um, it, it, I would rather, and that's why probably I gravitated to metal. Um, I don't think Helms Lee is going out and paying uh, songwriters to write this music for them. or. Um, and that's another thing I admired about the, the Ava Brothers in this. They talk about, at one point in their career, they were approached by a label in Nashville, I think it was RCA, and they thought, oh, wow, we're, you know, we're going to get our big break here. And, um, brought them in a boardroom, you know, had a super long, nice oak table, and said, well, we really like you guys, but um, how would you feel about singing other people's songs? And... Ava Brothers pretty much told him to go pound sand. Um, you know, we sing and write our own stuff, and if you don't like it, we'll go somewhere else. Um, and they did. So Rick Rubin reached out to them, and granted, he's got a super large label, but as you'll see in this documentary, he stays out of their way. He might give them a pointer here or there, but they write all their own stuff, and all their own ideas come out. So uh, kudos to them for this. This is a great documentary if you like to watch, even if you're not a fan of the band, just seeing how... The recording process works. Um, it's very interesting. I watch documentaries on bands all the time that I don't really like, but if it's like a behind the scenes type stuff, I, I find it fascinating to hear how an idea goes from the beginning of, hey, listen to these chords and, and these lyrics to what it becomes when you hear it on the radio or something like that. So definitely check it out. If you have HBO, I think you can probably watch it on demand. Um, this has some bonus footage of them at home and some other stuff. So if you're a really huge fan of Ava Brothers, I highly recommend picking this up. Um, next up, speaking of people that do write their own stuff, um, we have Lily Mae. Um, so this is a compare and contrast of what I was talking about earlier. She's signed to... Uh, this is the back. I uh, probably can't see it very well down here. She's on Third Man Records, which is... Um, owned and operated by Jack White from the White Stripes. So she's from Nashville. Um, she was, I'm going to guess, was um, approached by some major label um, folks saying, hey, you want to come? Uh, you know, you've got a certain look, you know. I mean, she's kind of a, she's got a different look, kind of a, a cute girl, little different haircut. Um, but she... In the liner notes, this is the book that comes with it. And if you look at the lyrics, um, there's songwriting credits up here. Every one of them starts with um, Lily Mae. So she wrote all these songs. Um, and I'm going to guess some major label turds probably said, wow, she's got a, you know, she's got a certain look. She's a little different looking. I bet we could make some money. Uh, off of this lady, and I'm hoping she told them to pound sand as well. Um, and Jack White saw something in her and said, hey, I'll sign you. And uh, this album is country. Um, I'm going to say not syrupy, poppy country like you may hear on the radio. It's traditional country with a little twist, I would say. Um, she has a new album coming out in August. <clears throat> She's currently touring with the Rockateurs. I can never pronounce their name. It's Jack White's band. Um, and I believe in August or September, right after her new album drops, um, she's going to be opening for Robert Plant. So um, I'm guessing she's going to start blowing up um, pretty much like Emily Robinson. Robert, what are the Emily Scott Robinson and I talked about her in one of my other videos. I look for these two ladies to really blow up this year and you're going to hear more from Lovely and May coming up. So you've been warned um, in a good way. Uh, next up, some, if you're a black metal fan, I, you know this. I mean, this is dissection. This isn't really anything crazy um, that you don't know. Storm of the Lights, Bane. But this has uh, where Dead Angels Lie also. Yeah, there's the back. Um, innards. Um, and some more innards we have here. So what sets this apart? I think this was remastered. Um, it's 
lyrics. Um, you can't read them, but there's nothing special to see inside here. Some some photos. Um, but what makes this different is this has a few um, where Dead Angels Lie. It's a demo version, and then it also has a cover of Elizabeth Bathory by Tormentor, and then um, Feathers Fell from the Japanese release, Son of Morning from the Japanese release, and then there's a cover of Antichrist by Slayer. Um, I don't really like when black metal bands cover bands like Slayer. Um, to me, it just sounds kind of cheesy, um, and they, they do a good job of it, but um, the vocal style of, of uh, dissection with Slayer, it just doesn't sound right to me, but um, if you're uh, <clears throat> starting to go through YouTube and think, wow, I'd really like to get into black metal, I'm not sure where to start, what's a good representation of what black metal is, this is, in my opinion, uh, this or maybe Immortal. Uh, early immortal are what to check out but if you uh start here this came out in 95 it's uh, considered by many a classic like i said this is a reissue i'm um, the original of this on vinyl it's going for like 800 dollars or something like that don't go that route that it, it's the same music on the cd so um next up is a uh, kind of one of my rarities um this is a box set from uh, northern heritage um limited out of 100. You can't see it because it's written in ballpoint pen right here, but this is number 54. Um, this is 5-7 inch records. Um, the inside, this actually looks like it was spray painted, which is kind of cool. The, the front's kind of coming off. You can see someone spray painted the box that it came in. So Northern Heritage, they're labeled out of uh, don't remember what country. I want to say Finland, but that's probably not right. Um, but we've got um, a vinyl by Nightside. We've got um, not that one. Let me talk about that one last. Um, Pest. Um, we've got Clandestine Blaze and Bloody Hammer. Kind of a weird looking nun picture. It's like she's trying to take her pants off and on. I don't know what the the difference is, and the backs of these are nothing special, um, and the lyrics are on the inside. And then there's a fifth 7-inch that has previously unreleased <clears throat> songs on this, so the other 7-inches I showed you are all previously released. Um, my favorite on here, my favorite band is Nightside. Um, this has Call the War, <clears throat> excuse me, Almighty, Andros, The Return of, and Ad Noctum. Straight up black metal. And these get this is from Finland, by the way. Um, these guys are probably the the production. On this is brighter. Um, I kind of a lot of people like the basement dwelling, raw sounding black metal. I'm, I'm I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean, it has its place, but um, it's just it's hard for me to listen to a lot. Um, if I night side, I can just take this and put it on whenever I want, and it sounds great. Um, the other bands in this, um, Nightside's the one I'd heard of, which is why I went and got this box set. The other bands on it are, are it's okay, but it, it's really not great. I know a lot of people love Pest, but I'm just not a huge fan. Um, <coughs> this, it's all black metal, though, but to me, Pest and the other couple bands, Clandestine Blaze, kind of run together. Um, each one of these also comes with a little lyric sheet, nothing on the back. Um, kind of gives you some information about the band. So um, these go for like $300 now. So it's, if you want it, it's going to be hard to get. I, I don't know that I would <laughs> recommend spending $300 for <clears throat> basically what I'm considering one good 7-inch, but it's cool to have nonetheless if you're a vinyl nerd collector like myself. Uh, sorry, I'm going to take a quick sip here. Gotta stay hydrated in this heat. Uh, next up, uh, we have Ms. Moore, is what I'm gonna say they're called. This is Hebrew writing, which I believe is Hebrew for Ms. Moore, which is Hebrew for like chant or something of that sort. Um, this is the back. This came out on Roadburn Records. So this is. Um, they performed at Roadburn, which is, I um, believe this happens overseas, I don't remember exactly where, um, Netherlands maybe, um, but they have an album called, sorry, the 
lighting here kind of sucks. Yod, Y-O-D-H. Um, they performed it from start to finish at Roadburn. Um, here's the inside. So typically, um, ALN, I believe, is the main member, this dude here. Um, this is a one-man band type project, um, but to play it live um, would be a challenge. So he's recruited some live members to play with him, and that's who um, all those other guys are. Uh, this is <coughs> the double vinyl version, and it's clear vinyl. So you know, there's uh, A and B, and then there's a C and a D. Um, I normally hate live albums, as many of you do, I'm sure. There aren't many out there that are really good and worth listening to. Um, this one's really good. Um, it sounds like it was taken right from the soundboard. Um, there's no other special documentation here, but um, this was the cover of a Yod, Yod album. Um, this um, interesting story about ALN is he was actually a huge uh, Christian at one time, and uh, as he got older <clears throat> and started doing his own research, um, the, the way he was raised anyway, as far as Christianity goes, um, a lot of what he he was taught he as he grew older and started doing his own, his own research, he found that a lot of what he was taught um, and some of the stuff I was taught as a, a young guy too, you know, the heavy metal's evil, blah, blah, blah. Um, so his anger in finding out certain things he was taught were false um, came out in his outlet for his growth in, you know, being human and discovering, wow, you know, every, not, every, not all adults know everything and everything I'm taught about religion is 100% <clears throat> fact-based. So it came out in Mies more. So he's got a lot of other releases I'll highlight um, in other videos, but great stuff. Check them out. It's, it's black metal. It's kind of experimental. Um, I like the sound of Mies more with a live band. I think sometimes when one-man bands try to do things, it sounds kind of stale and uninspired. Um, still good, but nonetheless, um, I prefer to, to hear a whole band get together and make uh, some noise. So, and last but definitely not least, you all know this one. Well, I should say that if you know death metal, um, death leprosy. Um, this is not an original. This is something that Relapse just released only 500 copies of. Um, this is the Royal Blue with Gold Pinwheel and Splatter Edition. Um, this is an album I love and I <clears throat> don't currently own for whatever reason. And Relapse just reissued this. It's like they reissued Death albums nonstop. Um, but I had to get it, and I'll show you why I had to get it here shortly. And this is the innards, front and back. And then we've got some lyrics and a picture of the band up there. Um, this is classic death metal. Um, I, you know, if you're a lot of people that don't know metal at all, they hear death metal and black metal and think, oh, so um, death and, and dissection are the same, right? They're metal. Like, no, they're this is death metal and dissection is black metal. There is a difference. Um, if you're a rookie, you'll, you'll figure that out eventually. Black metal is more dark and evil, I think, and death metal is more, uh, tends to be, you know, songs pull the plug, open casket, born dead. The subject matter is usually a lot different. Uh, but this is classic death metal. Chuck Skolner, everybody knows him. Um, if you're into metal, this is the vinyl kind of a cool pinwheel design there on both sides and this is sold out now um, gold and silver labels as well uh, glad to have it in my collection I, I like to have an original press just because I've mentioned in some of my other videos sometimes vinyl that's colored um, doesn't sound as good and um, this actually sounds pretty good for a colored vinyl version relapse records been around forever um, they usually do a pretty solid job on on their vinyl pressings. Um, yeah, this is classic death metal. It uh, doesn't have a lot of bottom end, unfortunately, which I prefer my death metal. Kind of like a Cannibal Corpse. Um, but what makes this uh, re-release so special is it came with, and I have the box here, um, it's a, a leprosy um, 
statuette, I guess you could call it, or a bust, they call it. And number, there's only 500 of these made. This is number 207. That's the box. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, it's obviously the guy from the album cover. Um, you know, not something I needed. Um, gets a close up there. Kind of creepy guy. Um, and then it's hand numbered also on the bottom <clears throat> with a little death sticker. Um, I think it's cool. I'm going to add it to some of my other looking around here because I have collectibles up here you guys can't see. And I'll show you those in some other videos. And when I say collectibles, it's like little goofy things like this. Uh, I thought it was cool. You know, it's like, uh, what, I don't know what I paid for this. 50 bucks, maybe. I'm like, why not? Let's get the, the creepy collectible guy um, from the Leprosy album cover. I thought it was cool. Um, so that's it for this video. I'm coming up. I'm going to have first video I ever talk about where I talk about a Desert Island album or like I call it a Burning House Fire album, something I can't live without. Um, I will be highlighting that in the next video probably later on this weekend along with some other stuff I've been listening to like uh, Integrity, Bloodbath, uh, Cradle of Filth, um, some other cool stuff. So uh, thanks for checking this video out and subscribe and like and all that good stuff and I'll catch you guys later.